Today's focus report takes you to Syria and to the heart of the battle to retake the city of Raqqa from the Islamic State group. The US-backed alliance of Kurdish and Arab fighters known as the Syrian Democratic Forces have been nudging closer to the jihadist organization's regional bastion for months now. But a few weeks ago, they announced a new multi-fronted operation that commanders say will finally erase the notion of the Islamist group as a caliphate. Ground has already been won back as the SDF move from street to street and from house to house. Our colleagues at France 2 Television have sent this report. Raqqa, the Islamic State capital in Syria, ruled by terror for over four years. Upon arrival in these neighborhoods where Kurdish and Arab fighters have recently regained control, the streets are deserted. Silence reigns. At the first post on the front line, Mortifier and straight after. Run for cover, run for cover, there's a drone. An enemy drone attack, packed with explosives. Watch out, that's our drone. The black ones are ours, the white ones belong to Daesh. The drone war between the two sides rages on. Barely 300 metres ahead, the Islamic State group's signature black flag flies high. The majority of those fighting the Islamist extremists here are Kurdish forces, joined by some Arab rebel groups. Daesh are retreating bit by bit, and the young people from Raqqa have been able to join our fight. Confrontations have been ferocious. Jin, a fighter from Kobani, wants to show us some of the traces. The 23-year-old has been fighting the Islamic State group for four years. Our snipers were on the roof and Daesh's soldiers were hiding in these tunnels. It was during this battle that we started to break the enemy's morale. Come with me. I'll show you their bodies. In the rubble lie several jihadist corpses. Further on, she shows us her hall. Above all, don't make any quick movements. And you, get rid of your cigarette. Once these weapons belong to Islamic State group fighters, now they're in the hands of the Kurds. We can't go back to this house, it's a minefield. Minefields are what the fighters fear the most, along with drone attacks and car bombs. Around 100,000 civilians remain trapped in the city centre. Very few of them have been able to get out. As we leave the liberated neighbourhood, we meet one family huddled between two trucks. A baby and an old woman are among them, exhausted. Their house was taken by Islamic State group soldiers. Smoking had also been banned under their rule. Since their retreat, the family must now deal with some very painful memories. They whipped my children in front of me, and they decapitated my uncle. They whipped my children for not having long enough beards, and for wearing trousers that were too long. They didn't want us to go outside, to go to markets or shops. And if they saw our eyes, they arrested us. They stole our money, and when we tried to claim it back, they told us it was you who lost it, and what's more, you're accusing us. They followed people in the streets and filmed them, and then they'd turn up at those people's home and say, you did this and then that, to scare them. Along the main road, some residents are returning to the liberated neighborhood, carrying white flags to show they're not jihadists. They'll try to recover what they can from what's left of their ruined homes and piece together their broken lives. For them, the Battle of Raqqa is far from over yet. Well, for more on the battle there to retake the city of Raqqa, I'm joined now on set by Julien Terran, an expert in Middle East affairs at Sciences Po Saint-Germain-en-Laye University here uh, in the French uh, capital. Thank you very much for being Hi. with us here on France 24. Um, first of all, unlike the, the very similar battle taking place over the border in Iraq um, to retake the city of Mosul from the Islamic State group, um, is it fair to say that this operation will move or is moving much quicker? Uh, as an approach, yes, they did move pretty quickly. Uh, in a few weeks, they actually uh, entered the, the, the very city in itself. 
But uh, it's hard to say how quick it can be because, of course, even the fighters don't know that. They, as we have seen in the report, mm. they fight house per house, mm. uh, street per street, so, so it means it's very complicated for them. And everything is mined. Uh, I just come back from Lebanon and northern Iraq, and, and all the houses belonging to ISIS, uh, they might be trapped. So if it's not cleaned, you can progress easily. So it's what we've seen, actually, in the report, too. Um, just on that point, what kind of resistance or what kind of resistance could, in the future, the Islamic State group put up on those streets in Raqqa? They try to gain time since m a little bit more than one year. In May 2016, they said that, um, I quote more or less, something like, um, you can have Mosul, you can have Raqqa, you can have Syria in Libya, but at the end of the day, we will uh, maintain our presence there meaning that the territory they accepted more than one year ago, that they're going to lose, lose it, uh, meaning that for now on it's just like to prevent uh, the collapse to be too quick and so on and to reorganize. And uh, at the, just before the report you said something very thin, but which is exact, meaning it's the end of ISIS as a caliphate. It's, it's coming to an end. It's not over yet, of course, but it's not the end of ISIS as a terrorist group, and we have seen that. Just on that point, um, the, the, the U.S. who are backing um, the the alliance of 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 of, uh, of, of um, Kurdish and uh, Arab, fighters. Arab, Arab fighters, this the Syrian Democratic Forces, they're saying that this would be if if the town's liberated, this would be the end of the Islamic State group as a caliphate. What? How likely is that? Well, that that's probable, but at least uh, regarding to territory. But the ISIS might still claim to have a caliphate or something. It's a debate between Al Qaeda and, and ISIS, but that, it, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that what will happen in Raqqa after ISIS will be uh, defeated there. I mean, we have seen that civilians are displaced. Mm. They don't really want to go back until it's not completely secure. Uh, what about their house? What about the, 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 the things that they had inside the house? And what about the governance? Mm. Uh, at the origin, we thought that it was just an, a full Arab force belonging to the Syrian Democratic Force that would liberate it. And actually, the, it's a mix now. And uh, we speak about a civil council, but uh, that might rule the city, like in Mombij elsewhere. Uh, but in Raqqa nowadays, it's, it's almost only Sunnis living there, meaning that might they uh, accept a Kurdish-led rule over the city? And what about the Syrian regime, which is not very far? and tries to, well, wait a little bit for some mess, perhaps, in the city to regain it as a as government for stability or something, at least pretending to be. Uh, so, and this in Raqqa is symptomatic of what is in all the region. In Iraq, you spoke about Mosul, it's, mm. it's the case. Uh, nobody knows what will happen. In, over there, we know that the Kurds want to get independence, uh, Kurds from Iraq, so, but Baghdad would probably not accept that. And in Syria, we see that uh, the Syrian Democratic Forces take uh, more territory, and we see that there's some, uh, some problems between the uh, US-backed coalition, including uh, the uh, Syrian Democratic forces, the uh, regime, pro-regime forces, and on the ground, everything is about militias, like groups, more or less autonomous groups, even mm. inside the regime area, for instance. There are a lot of Iraqi Shia militias, and even Afghani, and uh, everything is, is coordinated by Iran on their side, meaning that there's no plan for governance after. So the UN plan to have some more talks in July. We're going to see what will happen. But until now, these talks haven't been that efficient, actually. I want to talk also um, about Raqqa as a city. It's been in the hands of the Islamic State group since, since 2014. Do we have any detail about what's been going on inside the city walls since they, since they took over? What I can say on that, I have not been uh, to Raqqa, but uh, I interviewed some people from Mosul, actually, displaced Sunni who lived under ISIS rule. And so uh, what is coming out of it is always these kind of uh, testimonies that we have heard, mm. meaning that very harsh rules like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, kids learn how to count uh, by additioning, uh, like 
one policeman, one policeman makes two kuffars, meaning like two infidels, which is even mathematically completely weird. And a lot of rules, dogmatic rules regarding to daily life and so on, harsh and the population actually suffered. This is why I said that the governance after is very important, because if the population suffered, and if you want to rule out extremism, you have to organize some kind of living together possible. And, and that's the main aim today. Okay, uh, Julien Terran from um, Sciences Po University here in Paris. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you. Well, I'm back at the top of the hour with another roundup of the latest world news and headlines here on France 24. Do stay tuned. There's much more coming up throughout the day.